If you are soft, you may want to skip this one. The piles of rats are as thick as the twins' humor, and you may need a doggy bag for Dave's similes. The boys take a road trip to solve a massive rodent infestation, and solve it they do. Dave does some crawlspace yoga, the boys drink some brown stuff, and Jim palms a thick pile of raccoon shiz. Let's get into it. You can get up there, we'll clear all this out before tomorrow. Okay. This is the one we usually go through, and this is where the camera's at. Oh, perfect. When was the last time you caught one? Oh, I pulled up the last traps here Monday. Yeah. Okay. We so you want to pull that up? Well, you'll that. see a camera down okay. there. Yeah. Right there. We've had spring traps. We've had blue traps. We've had the plastic traps. We've had the electric traps. We've had... <laughs> Which traps have worked the best? The, the spring traps. traps. The spring ones, right? I yeah. got one on a, a blue trap. But yeah, unfortunately, we tried to wait for him to die, and he didn't. So I just had to throw him away with it. Okay. And a couple traps disappeared, so you may see the one with the carcass in it. Boy, that's a tight crawl space. Is it? Yep. Did he tell you about the raccoon and the, what, what was that? The, there's the a possum? Dip, or the possum. Yeah, I sent that to you, right? He takes it all the way out of the camera view. Up down under that wire and everything. Wow, that is extraordinary. Oh, look at this. Big old, ugh. Wide open right here. Is it, David? It pulled all this mesh out. There's all kinds of raccoon poop here. I mean, piles of raccoon poop. It smells like if you took dried poop and dropped it down a sock and let it ferment in the sun for seven days. I can a little taste it in my tongue a little bit. You gross me out. I'm gonna set these underneath your crawl space. Can I get a little bit of that cat food or dog food that you have too? Well, there's some in the bowl right there. Help yourself. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> you didn't catch one with that Victor Electric? This is useless, yeah. No. Yeah, that one down there without the camera's got the, uh, the cat food, yeah. Do the rats keep you up at night, Bill? Yeah, there's sometimes that I'm sitting there just kind of dozing off and I'll hear noises in there. Okay. Okay, peanut butter, cat food. Now we wait. Dave wants to set a rat trap underneath the entrance of that deck, so see if we get anything. Day two. This is our new rat mobile, guys. Check it out. Got our convection oven here, cooktop, full sink, refrigerator. Here's the power bed, guys. Check it out. But look at how cool this is. Sorry, guys, we didn't make the bed. Are you ready to rat today, David? This may be the biggest rat infestation in a crawl space that we're dealing with. The footage last night was unbelievable. Once we figure out how they're getting in and seal up, we're going to war with these rats. They have no chance. He went through three or four top-notch pest control companies. They've already crawled. I don't know, man. I'm thinking it's the decks. We got to explore the decks. What you're thinking? You think it's sewer rats? No, I think those decks need to be explored. The pressure's there, but that's what's exciting. I think that's what's kicking in the adrenaline is like we're hours and hours and hours away from home and we only have a certain amount of time to knock this out. Like we can't be here for a week. So that adds pressure. Yep. I'm pretty confident that uh, we're gonna have a long day today, but we'll get to the bottom of it. But you never know, guys, these rats are smart. All right, first thing, let's go get those rats out of that crawl space. Good morning. Good morning. Just, they're everywhere. Big party last night. Big party. <laughs> Do you notice how our traps didn't flip over? They're just... Well, that's because you got it on that board. That's what yeah. I needed. Well, that's smart. So we got Raul here. I know we traveled all the way up here. And you forgot something. What did you forget? My belt. Can we show him your <laughs> nice belt? Look at this, you guys. <laughs> That's Raul's belt. For today, yeah. 
Well, now that's brilliant. So guys, if it is the roof rat, why aren't these bait box working? Let's just say we find an entrance on the outside and they're getting in. Why aren't these bait boxes working? That's why I will never ever go to a customer's house and sell you a bait box program. They don't work. They're not effective. But let's wait. Let me just calm down a bit. Let's wait. If they're the Norway rat, I gotta retract what I'm saying. But if there is an entrance from the outside getting into this house, then my point should be well taken. Now that we're getting the smoke machine ready, one of us has to get into that tight crawl space full of rats to identify if there's any smoke. We're gonna rule out the Norway rat. So whoever loses rock, paper, scissors got to go under. Here Who do you go. think's gonna win, Dave or Jim? Fight! Yes! Yes! He's going under. No. Just tell, just tell him to shut the, the smoke off. That's not supposed to happen. Yeah, it looks like these, uh, they don't use this bathroom a lot, so they're pee traps. Evaporated. I open the window. Yeah. If you need do you add water? I'm doing that now. Yeah, what you want to do is this blown in insulation, very easy to detect. If there's any migration, they typically will tunnel or leave uh, pathways. This looks completely free of rodents right now, and there's no smoke. Let's go underneath the crawl space. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to fit, man. Suck it in! Think thin! Oh, okay, here we go. As of right now, there's no smoke. Bunch of insulation over there. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to be the Norway rat. Looks like it's going to be the roof rat. So I'm gonna head right over there where that deck is. And then we'll make our way back over here. This is gonna be a tough crawl. Jim, are you there? Pretty heavy markings right here. Okay. All right. That looks sealed up. The way I see it. This could be an opening over here. That's the underside of that deck. Completely sealed up. Another screen that's adjacent to the deck. That's pretty. Pretty sealed up. And these holes, they don't go anywhere. There's just wood on the back side of that. Hey Jim, this deck doesn't, if there's, there's no burrows, it's completely sealed up, man. To be honest with you, I'd focus on that other side, that other deck. I need some fresh air. If you're a person that's claustrophobic, you wouldn't be able to hang. You have to believe in yourself. And I'm looking right over there where this pipe penetrates this footing. There's no rub marks. So nothing on this side. We've got to stay closer to where all those cameras and where we cut all those rats. It's going to be on the other side of that footing way over there. Uh-oh. I just tore. Oh, that's not great. This is a, a wood-eating fungus. The most damaging fungus that you can get in your house is a, a fungus called Poria incrustata. It starts with a rhizomorph outside from a contaminated root system, and it's like the blob. It'll grow 
travel underground, come up into your footing, and once it grabs your wood, it will destroy your wood. The most damaging, unforeseen, most costly fungus to your home. I'm gonna write that down, you know, for future reference. <sighs> Find anything yet, Victor? Not here. Oh, yeah. Over there, yeah. I found the pole. Oh, you pulled this up? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, look at that. Look at that hole right there. And you can see how dark that area is. Look, it's rusting out. All the, all the urine, all the sebum. We found it. We're closing in on them. Tonight's gonna be a big night. We're either gonna do a lot of sucking with the twins rat bat or a lot of snapping. This is getting exciting. It's unbelievable to me how the other pest control companies did not want to open up this deck that Bill requested as a client. Unbelievable. If they would have done that, we would have never had to been called out. All right, while they're cutting that deck out, let's head up top. little sketch. All right, as you can see here, we have raccoon droppings. So if you ever come across that, you guys, you don't want to make any contact. You've got to have some personal protective gear because there's a lot of toxicity inside raccoon poop they have a lot of roundworm eggs, and if you inhale it as a human being, it can cause a lot of health damages. So back off before you do any cleanup. It's serious. I just have to visualize that I'm cleaning up my kid's diaper. That's all I'm doing. I'm gonna be changing my kid's diaper. This case is gonna be nasty. First gonna use the enzyme just to neutralize it and wet it. Droppings, they get dried up. You pick it up. Powder gets up into the air, so I'm going to wet it. Plus, it'll help with the odor. the other pest control companies they had a good idea but all that was not packed in and properly excluded so these are the results I literally had to get off you guys that thing was ready to drop don't put all your weight on it Jimmy you're gonna fall through that thing is so weak gotta get this excluded the right way Hopefully Jimmy doesn't fall through this roof. Here, I'm doing this for Bill. Are you ready? Holding it. Okay. Oh, slow. Bro. Help him out here, bro. Oh. That was insane. Okay, guys. So this is just, it's just solid. Solid. What I think about is long-term exclusion work, right? So this is wood. So water's gonna soak up into this wood. 
could get behind here and weaken these screws and pop out. So what we like to do is waterproof this in so the water doesn't have the ability to soak into this wood right here. And then it'll coat all this as well. So the water will just come down, beat off right into the rain gutter. So it's a little extreme, but it's something that you want to do because you don't want these rats coming back in five years from now, seven years from now, right? All right, so Dave's going under, guys. Even though this is what, I gotta this is what a beautiful, beautiful brother does. Even though I lost, I gotta, he went on behalf of me. That's the hole right there. And you can see the rub marks right here. Look at this, heavy, heavy spot. So they're coming from the deck. They're going this way, getting underneath this crawl space. That's my prediction. Tonight's a big night. Okay, so I took this plumber's plastic Tupperware dish here. I mounted the camera on the back side, pointing directly to where we're gonna set the rat back outside. So I wanna see if they're coming at nighttime, coming and thinking that this is the way out, right into the rat back, getting sucked out. The more we could suck out of here without trapping, the better. Very efficient. <sighs> One thing to know about these small baby rats, they will survive and they will live forever in this crawl space. They will cause destruction as they get older and then continuing breeding. So getting these baby rats as quickly as possible out of this crawl space is imperative. A lot of people ask, well, what's that hole in the middle of your bait station? Let me show you here. Then we take the handle off. We flip it over like this, and now this becomes the support of the rat back. This is David's favorite, favorite part. I just of, get excited. I don't know if there's a lot of fishermen that watch our program. Leave in the comments if you're a fisherman. And you know what that feeling is like and heading out to the lake or the rivers and you want to catch these big fish? Well, David and I aren't fishermen, but we're definitely some ratters. We get excited on every job, guys. Look at how beautiful that looks, guys. Just, even if we don't catch rats, the beauty of what that looks like. It's like artwork underneath your crawl space. It's beautiful. All right, guys, which ones do you guys think is gonna catch the first rat? Put in the comments, A, A B, B, C, or D. D for Dave, ooh, there's a sign, guys. D for Dave. I was gonna show you guys how to convert this uh, rat trap into the twin traps, but the wood is completely yeah. deformed. So we'll use this one here to mount our camera and lay it down to stabilize our camera. You, you know what I love about this kill bar is you hold it like this and it really secures the wire, Dave. Look, Look at that. that. We should patent that. <laughs> Now that that side of the deck has been completely investigated, now it's time to investigate this side. Oh! Oh! That got way deep. These are all rat markings right here. That's, oh, that's the, the, this, the, the, the grease marks you talked about. Yes. yes. And then Massive it right runway. Into the crawl space there. What is and that, a pipe? It smells like bad. Have you guys ever watched the pimple popper? Yeah, I do all the time. The way I described it is those big pus balls fermenting in the sun for seven yeah. days. That's yeah. what it smells like. It's just nasty. Tonight's gonna be a big night. How so? I mean, it's gonna be a rat party. It's gonna be a rat party. It's gonna be a oh, rat be party fear. underneath the crawl space. They're gonna be loud. We should have a disco ball underneath that because it's gonna be a big party. <laughs> see all the yeah. heavy, heavy markings right here. So I added some screen right here. What we'll do is we'll fuse this together. All right, we sealed up those areas, put the deck back here. Went ahead and set up another camera. See the screws work here, guys. That's triple layered, that's metal, foam, wire mesh, foam, and then a very screen. thick coating. Trap and camera. Guys, we, we were just pulling away and literally five minutes later, you won't believe what we caught. Yeah, three of them. 
Look at that. <laughs> they all buried their heads right in. That's wow. unbelievable. These are almost my size, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. These are babies. Yeah these are, yeah, these are about eight days to 12 days old. So it looks like A, B, C, D. D got a little action. Yep. But A is the ace right now. That was epic. Six so far. Let's get back in to the Ratmobile. Day three. Well, good morning, y'all. It's a rough night. I could not put my phone down last night. What is it, 5, 5.40 in the morning. I have never seen a crawl space with so many juvenile rats. It was a frenzy last night. I didn't get much sleep, it's a little rough. We're gonna be heading out to go pull all these rats out. I have no idea how many rats we got in that rat back. This is exciting. Before we go inside, let's go check the rat back. How many do you think, guys? Post in the comments. Two, five, ten. Here we go. Oh. One, two, two, three, four, five, seven of them. We got seven of them, you guys. Oh, look at this, you guys. Jimmy put a snap trap in, look at this. Trap flipped over. This is a perfect example right here. You know, some people say, that's one of the comments, you guys are con artists, charging the amount of money for your traps. Go ahead, use these old methods, because you're not gonna be effective with rats, and you can't afford not to catch rats in your house. Look at the damage that it's done. Let's go check the shed. Right in the head because of that bait tugger. A, B, C, and D. That's gotta be a record. Okay, I'm rebaiting and resetting these traps, but I just put bait on one side of our bait tugger. I'm not gonna be putting that much bait. Okay, I want them to really get into starvation mode. So all of these are baited just on one side of the bait tugger. We took the one from the trap from the deck and put it here. So now we've got uh, five rat traps under here. Okay, so they're hearing some activity here. So that's where the tub is, directly behind this toilet. So we opened up a, a small incision yesterday. I just placed a red a wooden trap. Dave's going aggressive. He says, Jim, there's more rats in that shed. So he's building out some more twin traps. Day four. It's about, what, six in the morning here. Yep. We're headed back to Bill's to pick up round two of our second batch. How many did we catch? Because remember, we set up five traps this time. So the Rabobile, I believe, is giving us some tremendous, tremendous luck, guys. Cheers to Cheers. that, Gable. Yes. All right, let's head over to Bill's. Oh, we got one. We got one. One? Yep. One's better than none. Here's the shed. Dun, dun, dun. So one of the things that I did learn, this was set right up against each other, okay? And when this one went off, it activated this trap right here, okay? So make sure if you do set these traps, you put them far apart, like four or five inches apart, so you don't take the risk of uh, activating or deploying these rat traps. So that's a learning lesson here. Well, you learn something new every day. Again, guys, look at this. Forces them straight into the hood, right into the kill zone, and then right there, the headshot. Fast kill right there. One thing here is bird feeders. Huge attractor for rats, as well as got an apple tree. 
apples drop. Look at this. Oh yeah, you can see the, right? See the This number. could be squirrels, this, but this is a perfect feeding ground for rats. But most important, this deck right here, rats love to come underneath there after they get their food source, and then they use the hole when there's entry points for nesting. So the secret of rat extermination is finding those small holes that are going into your structure. That is the secret to stopping rats from entering your house. Let's go get some of those rats out of that crawl space. Let's get some cleanup done. We're gonna finish up the exclusion work here. I got an idea for Bill that I'm quite excited about. Oh yeah, look at that. Into the kill zone, look at this. Little babies, look at that. I gotta say, the Victor Rat Trap is a good housing for rodent monitoring. Well, these have caught a lot of rats. What we're gonna do to sanitize them before we put them back in our rat mobile, take some of our enzymes. I'm gonna leave a rat trap under the crawl space just like this against the twin traps. Okay, so we got the twin traps up against the Victor Wooden rat trap. You guys ask, hey, what do you guys do with your rats after you catch them? So in this environment, we know that there's peacocks, we know that there's a lot of raccoons. So we're just gonna leave them outside to let mother nature do its course. I did, I did. So would you say that the twin traps definitely... They all work, and I don't know what it is that attracts them to the trap. That little hoodie and the bait tugger lures their heads right in. And that's the big failure with these other snap traps is that the other traps allow them to come in from the side. So when they take the bait and they hear that trap go off, they're, they have the chance to run and then it gets them in their legs or gets them in their, you know, uh, their tail. With our traps, it lures their heads right into the kill zone. Why are they attracted to your traps? Because I put the trap with the same bait. When we sealed up those entry points, you can see the they oh, were like, in, they okay. were like, oh my gosh, where, where? Where's the food? Where's, where's the, the food? food? Where's right. the food? Because yeah. that's what rats do. They don't care so much about water. They care more about food. And when you close them into your four walls, they're panicking. That panic exerts energy, then they get into starvation mode, and that's the success of rat trapping. I put traps down and I would catch one or two a month. You guys put five down, you catch five a night. So you've been happy with the services? Oh, excellent, yes. Yeah. Well, you gotta understand is, you go through life, you eat, you drink, you laugh a little bit, you smile, you talk with people, but there's always something there that's just not right. You wake up in the morning, you go in the bathroom, you hear him crawling around or scratching at something. It automatically tells you your day's not going to be good because it's reminding you again, you have no, you have no hope. And when I watch your videos, I see you enter the house and you still talk with the people. That look of desperation and hopelessness is what I felt until I found you guys. Because I know what all these people went through. Oh, I went through it for a couple years. Some went through it many more. Wow, Bill, I want to put a hug for that, man. <laughs> There's no money in the world that can replace that moment we had with Bill. The emotion, the tears out of his eyes, and to be able to come over here, travel hours and hours and hours, and bail him out of this rat infestation is the most rewarding for me as an individual and that's the contribution that I'm able to make, the impact. So, touching. We are out of here. Dave. Oh, that's Wait. right. This for sure deserves the rat dance. <laughs>